Here we see a little video of atoms bouncing around, bouncing off of each other. And this idea would give rise to Brownian motion of smoke particles or pollen. For a long time, the idea was that atoms are like small billiard balls, solid spheres with the mass uniformly distributed about 10 to the minus 10 meters and the electrons sort of hidden somewhere inside. J.J. Thompson, who had discovered the electron, uh, then came up with the so-called plum pudding model of the atom, where the electrons are spread out over an otherwise positively charged sphere. So here is a schematic of that. The electrons, which uh, Thompson knew were really small particles, would be spread out uniformly, while the 10 to the minus 10 meters of the whole atom would be a uniformly positively charged mass. So Mr. Rutherford came up with an experiment to test Thompson's model by shooting alpha particles at the atoms. And alpha particles are basically the nuclei of helium atoms. Here is a schematic of Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment where there is a source of alpha particles, a thin leaf of gold foil, and all surrounded by a detector. And as alpha particles are shot at the gold foil, they might be deflected, and where they hit the detector, we might see a scintillation, a flash of light. So here is an applet of Rutherford's experiment, and we can first have a look at what might happen if atoms were like billiard balls. Um, basically everything would bounce back, maybe some of the alpha particles would stick, um, but by the time Rutherford did his experiments, they already knew that uh, matter is mostly empty space. Um, and based on the plum pudding model, they would actually uh, expect um, the following to happen. The particles, the positive and negative charges were distributed outside uh, throughout the atom and Rutherford would expect basically all the alpha particles to go straight. The reason for this is that if the charges are spread out then the Coulomb force is never much larger than a micronewton or something like that and the greatest deflection of the alpha particles that we would see would be much less than a degree. So all particles would basically be going straight. However, when Rutherford did the experiment, to his surprise, although most of the particles went straight ahead, still a significant fraction were deflected over significant angles, and there were even a few that were backscattered, reflected backwards, which could not be explained with the plum pudding model. Based on the data, Rutherford uh, suggested that the positive charges were not spread out throughout the atom, but were actually in a small clumped core of about 10 to the minus 15 meters in diameter, whereas the electrons were spread out over the whole atom of diameter about 10 to the minus 10 meters. So that model of the atom actually fits the data as obtained in Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment. Now, as you already know from the chapter of quantum mechanics, the method, the model by Rutherford is not perfect, although it was an improvement. And we now know that the electrons are actually in orbitals about the nucleus. But as we see here, they effectively give the same results as uh, Rutherford's model. So Rutherford's alpha scattering model um, cannot distinguish between a model where the electrons are randomly distributed about the atom or where they are in orbitals. Here we see a schematic picture of uh, Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment. So the gold leaf is only a few atoms thick because we want the alpha particles to go through and not be stuck in the gold. And the setup is mostly in a vacuum because alpha particles are stopped very quickly in only a few centimeters of air. And we don't want that. We want them to interact with the gold leaf and possibly be deflected. And then the detector is a zinc sulfide coating 
And if an alpha particle hits that, then we see a flash of light, a scintillation. Here we have another look at what happens to the alpha particle as they pass through the gold. So if they're very far away from the nucleus, they do not feel any Coulomb force and they basically go straight ahead. When they get closer to the nucleus, they get deflected by the Coulomb repulsion over some angles, maybe 10 or 20 degrees. The closer they get to the nucleus, the larger the magnitude of the Coulomb force and the larger the deflection. And when an alpha particle hits a nucleus almost face on, it will get deflected backwards over angles larger than 90 degrees. shows the results of Rutherford's experiment. What we notice is that by far most of the alpha particles go straight ahead. They get pretty much not deflected at all. Whereas a very small fraction, about 1 in 80,000 or so, get reflected backwards, get deflected over angles more than 90 degrees. And what we also see is that this is a log scale. If we were to plot this on a linear scale, then basically we would see no particles that are deflected over angles larger than maybe 10 or 20 degrees.